uh, uh, we can start, uh, the rest will join us. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, we are glad to have you and be part of this event. So my name is Aisha and I am the Vice Chair of Archipoli KU Power and Energy Society. And the event today is held by Archipoli KU Power and Energy Society to celebrate the PS Day 2021. Yeah, uh, for those of you who might not know much about what uh, PS Day is all about, uh, the Power and Energy Society was formerly known as Power Engineering Society, and it was changed to its current name in uh, 22nd uh, April 2008. So, yeah, it was changed to, you know, expand the society and accommodate more people because, you know, initially it was uh, limited to only those uh, people who are working in the power utility or uh, electric grid. Uh, so, yeah, changing the name allowed more people from uh, the energy sector, and this led to increase in membership. Uh, the first PS Day was in 2018 to celebrate the 10 years of the new name. And since then, every other year, PS members all over the world celebrate this day uh, by holding events, webinars, uh, workshops, and etc. So the theme is different for every year. And this year's theme is Clean Energy Revolution. Clean Energy Revolution, yeah. Uh, and this also connects to the seventh goal of UN Sustainable Development Goals which is to ensure a universal access to affordable and reliable energy to all. So based on that, uh, our topic today is uh, clean energy storage technologies. Uh, but uh, before uh, we go to that, uh, I'd like to request you all to mute your mics and to, re so to reduce the you know, background noise uh, and any interference. Uh, and if you have any questions, kindly just uh, put it in the chat box. So now, uh, Allow me, guys, to welcome our student branch chapter chairperson, Alan Koech, to say a few words uh, about uh, IEEE. So, Alan, is Alan around? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. Okay, welcome, welcome, Alan. So, thank you, thank you so much, Aisha. Um, good afternoon, oh, good evening, everyone, and. Um, I hope you're all doing well and uh, you're staying safe during this uh, corona period. Um, as Aisha mentioned, my name is Alan Koech. I'm the chair chapter. I'm the IEEE Kenyatta University uh, student branch chair, as well as the photonics chair. So, um, I'd like to mention one or two things before um, I head back to Aisha. So I just mentioned one or two about IEEE KU. Then uh, just for a minute or two, because I'm seeing time is much different. Yeah. So currently in KU we have these five chapters, and um, I know we have members in members who are wish willing to join IEEE, but currently they are not sure where to join or not. So in KU we have the photonics chapter, we have the power society chapter, host and we also have the Comsoc Society, also for Engineering and Medicine, EMBS, Engineering Medicine and Biology Society, and you have Affinity Group Way. So all these are uh, societies which are uh, under IEEE KU, which um, will be sending you all these events, hosting all these events, and providing you all this uh, up-to-date uh, content and um, workshops. So one of the core features of the uh, whole of, of IEEE KU, we want to provide you events that will enable you to grow your career, push your career from one step to another. So like today, the Power Energy Society is having this uh, test day about the clean energy, which will be taken through by Martha. And I hope that during the session, you'll be able to gain much, be able to learn something, ask questions, be free. At least you can be able to uh, increase your knowledge in uh, one or two areas which are uh, you are good at. So as well as we are planning as as well as we are continuing um, um, to the changes we as engineers and programmers we face uh, when we are selecting our different uh, languages to choose for programming as well as frameworks, all these things we face. So we shall be taking you through a step-to-step -step, uh, advice on what was the best approach and things like that. 
And so we hope that uh, for those who will be able to join, you'll be able to gain some knowledge and uh, maybe you as well, at the end of all this series, you can be able to maybe come up with a project which will be able to increase your, improve your career. So on members membership, um, currently at IEEE, we have the Future 50 um, promo, which uh, allows you to only half the membership fee. So joining at Poly when you only cost us the feature fifty promo code, you can be able to pay half of half of that is thirteen point five dollars. And this promo code, we are not sure when it will end. So the best time to use is currently now. Uh, we check up tomorrow and we are told it's not uh, working. So I really encourage all of you who are not IT Poly members as well as those who have not renewed them actually to be able to take this chance to call membership or uh, get, get for memberships. Um, and finally, I don't know if you have any questions regarding actually, you have any uh, difficulty joining renew membership or you have any question else, I'm going to reach directly to me and you have to know that actually. So as well with this, uh, maybe just watch or I hand it off back to Aisha. So please, uh, if you're in the session, please take your time. Uh, as 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 that will be taking us through all this uh, about the topic of today about renewable energy storage technologies. Um, feel free. There's four things which are normally taught uh, by engineer Zomo. It says that you have ask a question, seek clarification, uh, make a comment, or uh, tell about an uh, tell and uh, give a give an uh, application. So one of those four areas, pick one, and during this event, uh, you can either ask a question, seek clarification, make an observation, or uh, give an application of the, what will be discussed today. So that's where you'll be able to learn more and enrich your own skills. So with that, uh, thank you, Aisha. I'm back to you. Uh, thank you so much, Alan. Uh, so as Alan has said, let's take advantage of this promo code and join IEEE and its uh, various societies if you haven't joined yet. So now uh, our next speaker is uh, Stacy. Uh, I'd like to welcome Stacy to talk uh, to talk to us more uh, about uh, IEEE. We, Stacy. Hi guys, can you hear me? Uh, yes, 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 please. Okay, um, am I allowed to share uh, when I'm not a host or co-host? Mm, just a moment, let me make okay, let me try. Presenter. Mm -hmm. Let me see. But Aisha, you have my document, so you can share. Just if you can just share, I are a presenter. Are you able to share? Are you able to see the screen? Yes. Okay. All right. One second. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Jessia Winger. I am an IEEE member and the treasurer of IEEE uh, EMBS. I'm here to talk to you about women in engineering. So, uh, Women in Engineering is an affinity group, a global network with over 20,000 members in over 100 countries. And the mandate of the affinity group is to ensure that you advance women in technology at all points in their lives and careers. The mission and vision is to facilitate the recruitment and retention of women in technical disciplines. So at we were able to do that through organizing workshops, have mentorship sessions and outreach programs so that not only are women interested in joining this, but they also have the drive and the support to be able to follow through until the end. 
So this is, this is an example of a workshop that was had at, um, organized by we at Kenyatta University, where we share different technical skills. Okay, this was before the pandemic. So uh, we have, you see, as you can see from the picture, both men and women are encouraged to join. And um, the, the sessions are usually very informative, able to build capacities as uh, we share different skills. Uh, these are examples of the events that you've had virtually. Um, just people still being able to learn something and uh, just looking after each other, even though we cannot be in the same spaces. Um, this is one that was held uh, recently. Uh, where Charles was also there and the uh, engineer Michelle Boyd and Esther Moshiri. Um, these are people who are members of IEEE EV. And as long as long along, along with many others, other engineers such as Sally Musonye, we have uh, the group, some of the, the members of the group were part of the ventilator. Most of them are members of IEEE EV. Um, we have, this is an example of an outreach program that was done in 2019. So it's much easier to, to carry out the, the exercise of inspiring girls to join technical courses while they're still in high school. You nurture the interest so that after they do the examinations, they're more open to choosing um, STEM courses. So this is also an initiative of IEEE We. Um, the society, sorry, the affinity group also recognizes outstanding achievements of its members through awards such as IEEE We Awards and um, publications of the achievements of the members. For example, uh, um, this is just a snapshot of the IEEE We page, and if you check at the mid, at the, at the end. A story about the English of one of our members, Christine Weary. So we're very open to celebrating the achievements of its members as well as giving them the necessary support. Um, in conclusion, uh, I would like to encourage all those who have not joined uh, we to join. It's open to both men and women, as I have said. And once you're a member of IEEE, uh, joining we is free. So just uh, Sign up, add it to your cart, and um, welcome. We is a group of, is a vital group of men and women collectively using their diverse talents to innovate for the benefit of humanity. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Stacy. Uh, so again, to those who have not joined uh, IEEE, we kindly join. It's not only for women and, uh, you know, it's free. Uh, so uh, our next speaker is uh, Jude. Uh, I'd like to welcome Jude to talk to us more about uh, IEEE Power and Energy Society. Jude, welcome. Thank you so much, Aisha, our moderator. Okay. IEEE is one of the, okay, sorry. This is one of the societies in IEEE. And so, uh, are you sharing your your screen? Yes, yes, yes. I'm sharing my screen. Oh, okay. now. Can you see me? Mm, almost. Yeah, yeah. So, there we go. Our oh, and then this is that basically this is our committee for this year. We have our chairman who is Felix Shadrack and the vice chairman Aisha. Then the rest of the committee members, uh, myself, Jude Nyoike, Modesta, Vihambo, and Kate Mudoni. So about PES. PES provides the world's largest forum for sharing the latest in technological development in the electric power industry, for developing standards that get the development and construction of equipment and systems, and for educating members of the industry and the general public. That's basically what PES, uh, what, uh, PES entails. Uh, and uh, when you join PES, this is a society which embraces research, development, planning, design and co construction, maintenance, installation and operation of equipment, structures, materials, 
and power system for the safe, sustainable, economic and reliable conversion, generation, transmission, distribution, storage and use of electrical energy, including its measurement and control. Storage of electrical energy is one of the, it's our main topic of discussion for today. Okay, some might ask why you should join this. Uh, some of the benefits of, of joining PES is that you are going to grow and maintain your technical expertise. You are going to connect with peers and mentors and other professionals in the field through uh, talks and discussions such as this one. Uh, we also, we are going to be involved in contributing to the long-term future of this industry of energy. It will also save you money in publication events and more. Since uh, when you join PES, several publications, uh, award-winning publications will be available to you at no extra cost. And finally, you'll be able to advance, advance in your career. You're going to be able to meet uh, different potential employers in, in the activities and uh, forums conducted by PES. Okay, after joining a AAA, you also have a promo by you, you receive 100% off membership fee for joining this. So currently, that means that currently joining this is free after joining it fully. And I, I can encourage you to, to take advantage of this window, join it fully, use our promo code join PES for free. And also the previous members, if you have not renewed your subscription, is also a promo code 50% off new year subscription. Because of time, let me end my presentation there. And thank you so much, Aisha. And take over and welcome the next uh, speaker. Uh, thank you, Jude, uh, for highlighting the benefits of uh, PS to its members. And also, guys, uh, to those who have not joined yet, uh, use the promo code uh, before it expires. So uh, I'd like to welcome our next speaker, uh, Isaac Owino, who graduated from uh, Kenyatta University. Uh, and he's the current co-founder of uh, Hepton Engineering Group. He was the former PS Zero Hunger Day ambas ambassador to Kenya and the former chairperson of uh, Pivot Club. To talk to us more about the talk to us more about the Prime Power uh, Engineering Africa Expo Conference that is uh, going to happen this year in Sarit. Uh, welcome. Thank you very much, Aisha. Can anybody? Can all of you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you very yes. much. Uh, so let me share a brief document here. <clears throat> okay, my document will take a little time to share, but uh, the Expo Conference is all about power. And since you guys are from PES, we were expecting you to help us out in participation uh, because you cannot uh, Sorry, uh, because uh, the event is supposed to happen on July 20, on July 2nd, 2021. But uh, the main theme was for sponsorship. But you as students, uh, I believe that you might not be in a position to offer the kind of sponsorship that the conference requires. Therefore, it was our request that uh, as the PES Society, you contribute towards the conference by participating in proposals uh, and also presenting projects about energy. Uh, I'm sorry that I can't share. I don't know the problem with my computer. But I'll share at a later date or I'll share with the chairperson or Felix Shadrach. Uh, so the, the event is to be held at Surrey Center, as Aisha has said. But uh, unfortunately, the event has been postponed due to the lockdown. The organizer talked to me this morning and she told me to pass her apologies. And then uh, she will remind us of the specific date that has been set for the event. So the event covers energy, power, energy sources, energy storage, and uh, energy application in health. If you consider SDG 7, which talks about affordable and clean, en clean energy, this uh, event, this conference is aiming at producing clean energy to local clinics in Kenya. Therefore, we are encouraged as students, as sponsors, and as uh, participants 
to join the event. For those who cannot produce uh, proposals or any projects, you can participate by attending the event so that you can create new networks, you can meet new friends, and you can also learn about the developments in the energy sector. So for the tickets, they are quite expensive. Uh, the normal ticket goes for 5,000, and the VIP ticket goes for 8,000. Like I said, you are students and I understand. Myself, I was a student, and I know that getting such amount of money can be challenging. Therefore, I would encourage the leadership of PES and IEEE as a whole to help the students by buying. There are some packages which are offered. I could have shown you, but my computer cannot let me do that. So there's a bronze package. There's a golden package. So the gold package goes for 10,000 US dollars. For silver package, it is 5,000 US dollars. For bronze package, we have 2,000 US dollars. Yeah, those are the packages that are available for sponsorship. So if the PES community or society can come up with a, with a plan to buy one of the packages for the students to showcase their exhibits or their projects and proposals, it could be a very good idea. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for listening. And if there is any question, I would like to address them later on. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Isaac, uh, for sharing uh, the opportunity with us. Uh, because of time, I would like to welcome our next speaker. Uh, she is one of the she's one of the young and brilliant human engineers in the renewable energy sector. She's uh, currently working at uh, as a technical sales engineer and marketer at WGC Energy Solutions. Which is a total, which is an energy provider specializing in delivering solar energy systems to remote and hard rich areas across Africa. Oh, so her name is Chaltu. Uh, I'd like to welcome Chaltu. Uh, Chaltu is uh, the is currently the vice chair of IEEE Women in Engineering Kenya. She's also the secretary of uh, IEEE Power and Energy Society Kenya and the publicity lead IEEE YP Kenya. Also the vice chair of IEK Northeastern Branch and the publicity co-chair of STEM Handisi Lafema and also the co-founder of uh, Haili Africa, uh, Teltu, uh, Karibu Sana. Hi, Aisha, and everyone here today. So am I audible? Uh, yes, yes. Yes. OK, um, thank you for having me today. Uh, when I was invited for this, I've worked with I, uh, Felix before and Aisha also. So I'm really glad to be on a platform where we are also collaborating. So thank you so much. Um, I told Felix yesterday, unfortunately, I had a, a weird event yesterday. I wasn't really sure I'd be in a position to present today, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm good to go. And I hope today you'll be able to learn a thing or two from this presentation. So I'd like to share my screen. And thank you for the beautiful introduction, Aisha. So my friend is around, is asking me, does all that fit onto your business card? I'm like, yeah. So let me know when you can see my screen. Ah, we can see. Good. Yeah. So today I'll be talking about something that I'm really passionate about. That is now the renewable energy storage technologies. And I've been in the renewable energy sector since 2018, 2019. Um, I joined after I got into Doshi, then Seeing as this is an area I'd wanted to work in from campus, I decided to try and engage my 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 HR to let, allow me to get into renewable energy. And from there, it's been it's been a love story, I say. So yeah. So today I'm going to talk about renewable energy mini te storage technologies. So we have different storage technologies in the market right now. I'll just take you briefly through the different ones that we have. 
and uh, to be honest, I'll focus on supercapacitor storage. So I've previously worked with different storage systems. So the, the, the traditional ones are lithium ion and lead acid batteries, yes? And I've worked with both of them. And I can for sure say like based on the, on the advantages and disadvantages of each system. So that's what I want to shed some light on today because as I got to understand what supercapacitor storage is all about, it was like an eye opener. Even when you share with uh, clients and uh, industry institutions, it's, it's people are always like, how did we not, not know about this, you know? So today I'd like to, I know you, most of you are still in campus, but just to give you an insight onto what this kind of technology entails and uh, just to put you at a position where you know get to understand how you can what what kind of systems you can be able to start looking at even in your fifth years what kind of projects can you just just to open your mind a little bit because i remember the other day i was even talking to this lady in uh, in banking system they are doing financing and you can someone is saying they've been on a meeting with clients and these are people from abroad and all they think is Africa doesn't have anything new to offer. You know, we are the same old, same old. All we, we, we are not that advanced when it comes to technology. But I want that to change, which is why I'd like to give you an insight into what renewable energy technologies in terms of storage are all about. And then hopefully if you, uh, I'll be able to yeah, achieve that. So. That's my name. We are here today to talk about renewable energy storage technologies. This has been organized by IEEE KU Student Branch. By the way, I'd really like to congratulate this team for doing such a great work. They've been very active, one of the most active uh, SB chapters in Kenya. So keep up the good work and uh, yeah, and continue being a great team. Yes. So the, what you're going to discuss today, I've mentioned. So I'll start with stacked blocks. So stacked blocks is one of the storage technologies whereby now instead of pumping water, it uses the theory of, uh, you see the way with hydro, the water, the, the water, waterfalls now creating mechanical energy, which turns into electrical energy. It uses the same con concept, but instead of the water, now you have stacked blocks like 35 metric tons, which are lifted up and down to release energy. So it's like a bubble like tower. It's a really huge tower. For this one, you need to have it in a place where there's uh, enough space in terms of uh, land capacity, but you'll be able now to produce power. It, uh, yeah, it uses that concept. So those metric, 35 metric ton uh, stones are lifted up and down. So in that case, now they're able to release energy. Then there's the liquid air. This is the mechanism where which cools air down and stores it in pressurized above ground tanks. And then the compression equipment and power generators come from established supply chains in mature industries. So that it's a technological innovation, which is here now for our grid storage. So with liquid air, I'll show you some images that just to help you understand a little bit on what this is about. But it, 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 so you have air that is stored at very high pressure. And then now it's released when you need it to, to convert it into energy for use. So for stacked blocks, this is what it looks like. You can have your energy coming from wind or from, or from solar. Then the, the blocks you can see. So this, 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 uh, these steels over here have, have uh, those metric blocks that are connected to them. And these blocks are released up and down based on now when energy is needed, it's it's uh, it's taken down and up just to release that energy. I'm sure you're all students. You can be able to read uh, more into how the technology actually really works, but that's the concept behind it. And then for the liquid air storage, so you have these tanks now have they're they're stored above ground and they have pressurized air. So the liquidification plant is where the air is now turned into liquid. Then yeah yes and then now taken into the tanks when you need power when you need power to be supplied to the load then now the power recovery process happens and this air now is released and uh, the, there are some equipment which are here which now turns the 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 liquid air into air into power to supply the loads 
Then we have the flow batteries, which have been considered promising for as long as anyone's thought about long duration storage, but that, that hasn't been given many advantages in the marketplace. A lot of low battery scientists swear by the technology which circulates liquid electrolytes to have or to charge or discharge electrons via redox reaction. So with this one, you usually have two tanks where the electrolytes are able to move in between them and then energy is uh, released in that light. So you have the two tanks, the electrolyte tanks, and you understand if you, for those of us who've done electrical, you understand that energy is the flow of uh, electrons. Was it energy? <laughs> it's been a long time in class. So yeah, so with the electrons flowing, then you have your power flow and you have the flow and cell in between. So they're divided by electrodes. And then when you need the power to flow, so the pumps are turned on and off accordingly. So that's how your power is released for the flow batteries. And these are all technologies that have had a lot of uh, funds being driven into it. So there's a lot of research that is being carried out. Uh, some of them you find maybe when it comes to costing, just to bring to come up with a system that uh, is viable in terms of cost effectiveness, the equipment that is needed to create the batteries itself. These are some of the challenges that these technologies are facing. But in real sense, a lot of technology, a lot of research is being put into all of them, millions and millions of dollars. There's even companies like uh, it's Microsoft who's, which has had these flow batteries uh, set up for them. So it's the for most of these systems, costing is the issue, and if because to have a system that will be taken up as a, let's say the storage system and be integrated into solutions where people will take it up and use it, then it also needs to make economical sense, which is still being worked on. Then we have the lithium ion based storage uh, systems, which they are expected, to, they've risen so much in the recent uh, years, and they're expected to be the dominant energy storage technology for utility scale applications. And lithium ion will also be dominant in commercial, industrial, and home consumer applications. Because yes, at first, uh, home, 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 home systems clients were a little skeptical, even industrial and commercial, because with lithium ion, there was the issue of uh, fires, like in case of an, if it explodes, putting out a lithium ion fire is impossible. You just have to wait for everything to burn down, and then you're able now to that's the only way the fire was turning up, turning off. But with the research and technology, instead of using the pure lithium ion, now you're able, they've been able to integrate something like lithium ion phosphate. But there, Isha, if I go fast, please remind me to slow down. But I hope I'm going at a good pace. So with lithium ion phosphate, then that has made the system less volatile and uh, has improved the take up in commercial, industrial, and even home systems. And then, although some concern, yeah, the pot potential safety, but with this, the technology has continued to improve. So it's still a competitive uh, storage system in the market right now. So yes, now we're using the lithium ion phosphate instead of the lithium ion. So we have the biggest uh, lithium ion providers as Tesla. Sorry and other service providers. So yeah, lithium ion has done well so far in the market. And yes, then I'll come now to the supercapacitors. So with supercapacitors, they are very widely, they are quite widely used right now in the market. <clears throat> They're also known as ultra caps or, or I'm used to shortening it, ultra capacitors or electrochemical double layer capacitors. And they're energy storage devices providing high energy and efficiency. So with supercapacitors, they are different from the other batteries in terms of that they store static static charge instead of electrochemical reaction. So with lithium ion and lead acid batteries, I, I, I'll not even speak about lead acid batteries today because I really want us to move from that technology kabisa kabisa. I used to have clients and People get you buy storage systems and then two, three years down the line, you still have to invest into these systems, which wasn't making sense, especially now for, for those of us who've been in renewable energy. We know that storage is the biggest challenge we've been having when it comes to providing solutions and coming up with systems. So being lithium ion has been quite well because with lithium, at least you can have 
the, the uh, depth of discharge of up to 90 up to 90 percent of the storage so just to help you understand what depth of discharge means it's that for a battery there's only so much capacity you can be able to use yes you can charge your battery up to 100 percent but for that battery life there is different but different batteries have different depth of discharge so let's say for example for the lead acid batteries you usually can only go up to 60 percent of discharge that means if you charge your battery up to 100 percent you can only charge it down to 40 percent so you will have used 60 percent of this battery if possible you are advised to even use like 50 percent so that you can improve you can so that you don't damage the battery and it gets a longer life cycle. At the end of this uh, slide, I'll be able to show you what life cycles is, just to help you understand what, what you need to look at when you're looking at your storage, so that you can be able to know what kind of value am I getting from this system and how, how am I supposed to use this battery? Because the other thing you find is, yes, you might have a good battery, but if you don't use it properly, you keep discharging it too much, then that's another thing that also makes the storage to get to actually to make swahili iharibike haraka sana so in 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 simple words uh, de that's what depth of discharge means so with supercapacitors instead of the electrochemical reaction so with lithium and lead acid also you have chemical reactions that are happening within the battery that's how the conversion happens that's how the charging happens and the discharge happens but with supercaps, you have the electrolytes. So it's it's a process of static charge instead of the electrochemical. Okay. Then um, they are safer than ordinary batteries. I'll tell you for sure. We you'll see for for I've worked with lead acid and lithium ion both. And when you have a situation where let's say, for example, you're in transit and uh, you 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 get your 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 battery systems to <clears throat> to collide or it's not handled properly or let's say for example you have a short scat, short circuit you can have explosive and very dangerous and uh, yeah very dangerous situations see any life threatening life life taking situations but but with lithium you have because of the of the fact that it doesn't involve chemical reactions within it. So in the case where you have like the short circuit or even it's, um, it's, I'm not saying go and mistreat the battery really, but I'm just saying in the event this actually happens because it's not 100% to, to say you will never have any situation where someone has not mistreated the battery or maybe a short circuit somewhere. But in that event with supercapacitors, you are at a safer ground. So because of that low internal resistance and also because there's no chemical reactions happening within it. So you, uh, you're you able to have a safer system. And uh, yeah, so in case of any of that, that system will not, be, will not explode as, it's, as compared to lithium and uh, lead acid. But one advantage, disadvantage with the supercars is that the, it has low specific energy so it can it can store a lot of energy but when it comes when you talk of specific energy it's more of like the energy density so this storage that's why it's a bit difficult to have it let's say in something like uh, electric vehicles but with technology we they've been able to include like let's say for example for the kilowatts lab we have they've been able to include electrochemical component electro electronic components which have improved now this state of uh, the energy density of the battery and make it now be able to be used even in factories where you find it can run a longer hour without discharging completely like too fast. So that's why I say now the other thing we can do is have now a collaboration of these systems because you find one has an advantage over the other and this has a, another advantage over this other. And so based on the kind of application you're looking at, you can be able to even merge these systems and come up with a and and come up with a technology that is even higher higher rated you know so whenever we are facing maybe the challenges in one way in lithium then we can we can take care of that challenge by integrating it with the supercaps and where we are facing a challenge with supercaps then we can be able to integrate this system now with the lithium and then we make sure that because the goal here is to make sure that renewable energy and clean energy 
gets to be the best option in the market when it comes to us looking at, at energy sources for our systems. Then this means we'll have a cleaner world because we are, we are using clean energy and we're able now to have a better, we are able to reduce even the, we are able to reduce the, okay. we're able to reduce the bad, oh my God, the word has gone away. So we are able to reduce pollution. Yes, pollution is what I'm looking for, sorry. So we are able to reduce pollution in our environment. Then this is what now the super caps look like. Uh, they have, they're they are smart in that. They have their own um, system that shows you the voltage, current, and it also has an integrated uh, over voltage, over current protection. You can use the battery up to 100% without damaging it. And you can also, uh, yeah, you can also be able to use the battery up to 100% without this, without uh, damaging it. And it also has very high and very low temperature working environments. So you can work with it in areas that have very high temperature ratings because with normal batteries, especially the lead acid, which is what I'm saying, we just need to get it out of the market, Kabisa, and make sure that as we as we provide renewable energy systems, Let's let's get the best into the market. Let's make sure that we are able to have the faith of uh, people uh, taking up these systems. So that's it on that. And then now I said I'll take you through what uh, life cycle of a battery is because we, you'll get this graph for different batteries. All all batteries usually come with this uh, life cycle graph. So when you get this life cycle graph, how do you know, like, how do you check uh, what your battery lifespan is? So in, st in storage and batteries, we usually don't talk about it in life. We talk of the lifespan in terms of the number of cycles. So as you can see, say for example, for this storage, maybe the, the life cycle is 3,500 or 3,000 or 2,000, but this is really low. For lithium ion, it's usually like 10,000 cycles yeah so let's say for example uh, so how this guides you if you can see there's the, there's this row with the number of cycles so from zero to three thousand five hundred and then there's this row with the depth of discharge so the depth of this discharge 20 let's say 10 20 30 40 up to 80 because for this is what now i was telling you for most batteries let's say you can you usually can't go up to a hundred percent discharge because if you do that, especially with the lead acid, those batteries will just die in no time. Like <clears throat> it will be a no brainer. So with lead, you're usually, usually supposed to, to size your batteries such that if you know this person is going to use, let's say 30 kilowatt hour, then you give him a 60 kilowatt hour storage so that if, if they use that battery, they will only be using half of it. I hope that's clear. So let's say, for example, I'll show you how to now check the depth of discharge and how it affects your the cycles of your batteries. So the more you discharge your battery, if you look at this graph, the more you discharge your battery, let's say you keep using your batteries up to 80, you discharge it up to 80%, then as you can see, your cycles will be around, let's say, 800 cycles. So cycles is how many times you can charge and discharge this battery. And usually it's recommended to have only one cycle per day. So if you're counting one cycle per day, that means if your cycles have, if you discharge to 80%, you only have 800 cycles. So divide 800 by 365. That will show you how many, how, how many years you're going to have for your storage. Say someone else uh, decides, no, me, I'm not going to, I have sized their system properly they're not discharging their battery up to that 80%. So let's say, for example, you discharge only up to 40%. Then if you do this, as you can see, your cycles will now be 1,500. So that means 1,500 divided by 365, that will guide you on the expected lifespan of your battery. If you go even you're discharging 20%, then that means your battery life is in, is improved even more. So you get the maximum uh, number of cycles you can be able to get for this system. So this is where now I come back to the supercapacitors. With supercapacitors, you can discharge your battery up to 100% and the life cycle is not touched. 
So the, 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 because there's no chemical reaction with this, it's because with the lead acid and lithium ion, you have chemical reactions going on. So the more you charge and discharge, the cycle keeps getting lower and lower. But with supercaps, even if you discharge that battery to 100% or to zero, you charge it to 100, you discharge it back to zero, charge it again, discharge it, it's able to handle that because it doesn't have the chemical reaction. So it gives it that superior advantage. Yes, so with that, I have finished my presentation. If there's anyone with a question, comment, please feel free to unmute and ask. And uh, Aisha, I'll hand it back to you. Uh, thank you so much, Shaltu, for the amazing presentation and the detailed explanation of the various Thanks. storage technologies. technologies. Uh, I've learned a lot, really, uh, and I'm sure the rest have learned a lot, especially to those of us who are interested in the renewable energy sector. Um, mm -hmm. To any any question, okay, that two questions. Uh, let me. Let me just read. Oh, so someone is asking. Uh, I've observed that you have used clean and renewable energy interchangeably. Is there a difference between the two? Wow, yeah, I also ask myself that question because when we're talking about renewable energy, it means it's a source of energy that cannot be depleted, yeah? So say something like the sun, we keep having sun, like you can't, you can't, okay, some astrologists claim that the sun will also die in some millions and millions of years, but as of now, we can't deplete the sun, we can't deplete the moon. So with the renewable, it means that it's a source of energy that cannot be depleted as per se. When you're talking about clean, it's that it's a source of energy that does not produce pollution, does not, does not produce, um, what is this called? Does not produce uh, waste or not waste per se, does not produce something that leads to uh, causing a pollution or affecting affecting the environment in one way or the other. I'll give you a point in case, let's say for example, for coal. So for coal, if you, yes, you will get power from this energy, but it's not a clean source of power because it, it, it will produce the gases that end up affecting your, the ozone layer, affecting the environment. So that's what we mean by clean, but, but you'll find in, I, I, unless someone mentions, I don't know of any renewable source of energy that is, uh, that affects the environment in a negative way. So that's why you'll find um, many a times we end up using them interchangeably because the renewable sources of energy that is solar, wind, and they, they, they are usually clean energy. So you don't per se cause any damage to the environment when you're using these sources of energy. And that's why now you'll end up using the words interchangeably. I hope that's clear. That clean, it means you're not causing any effect to the environment. And renewable is that it's a source that can be that cannot be depleted per se. So most of the time it ends up it, that's why it ends up being used interchangeably because renewable sources of energy, I've not heard of any that cause uh, an, a, a negative effect to the environment. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, the next question is. Uh, are any of the new storage technologies already applied in the Kenyan market? Give an example. So the technologies I've talked about, yes. Yeah, has it uh, been applied in the Kenyan market already? Yeah, so the ones which have been applied in the Kenyan market, I'll say is the lithium ion and the supercapacitors from the ones I've presented. Yeah, those are the ones I know of. And even with super cups, I'll tell you for sure, the market is uh, accepting it more and more because I remember even when I was in the previous company, someone asked me, have you ever heard about uh, storage yeah, yeah, capacitors? I'm like, I, how can capacitors store energy? Like, you know, you, you're used to capacitors just holding charge for some time and then releasing it. But I can have, a, a, a what is this called? A follow-up. Uh, webinar from this and then now explain in explain better like in, in more detailed terms how the technology itself actually works because if you look at it then yes the so to answer the question 
the lithium and uh, capacitors have been used in the Kenyan market. We have so many projects we've done in Kenya, Somalia. Um, there's, an, there's a mini grid we've done in uh, Dukana. There's mini grids we've done in Somalia, and these are systems over 250 kilowatt, another one 300 kilowatt hour, another one you're finding 100 kilowatt hour, and the systems are really actually performing. I'll take you even to the home systems. You find clients telling you, oh my God, I cannot believe that <clears throat> I'm using, like you can basically go off grid even for your home. So it's because of the fact that you're able to do the 100% discharge, then you it takes up it takes out that fear of what if I discharge my batteries and then they end up getting spoiled and you usually can't control how the people are going to use the storage. So that's why yes we have used them, both the lithium and the super caps. For flow oh, batteries, okay. I'm not sure if it has been used in Kenya, but it's been used in USA. There's a webinar I was doing for USA the other day, it has been used in USA. Ah, oh, but this okay. is why now we yeah. so that we can we can look at all these technologies and how we can be able to implement it now even here in Kenya. Okay, uh, that was detailed explained well. Uh, thank you. Uh, there's another question. Uh, how does energy storage fit into peak shaving? How does energy storage fit Pitch. into peak? peak? Uh, mm -hmm. Peak shaving. So if I'm not wrong, I remember with peak shaving, it's that uh, we it was more no that was load shading. Load shading was whereby we were using we were taking when you have you you take load that you can if you can shift the load to a different time when there's not much consumption. Okay, I've been out of school for long. Please remind me what peak shaving was. If the person asking the question, is it like when you have high demand and then now the, the energy storage being brought in now to take care of the extra extra demand? Mm, the question was asked by Kate Muthoni. Uh, Kate, if you are still here, can you just uh, clarify? Or maybe you can even use the mic to... Fantastic. Yeah, you can unmute and ask. Is my screen still sharing? Yes. It is. Okay. Yes, someone is speaking. Okay, uh, but if I've understood, let's say uh, what she said in terms of uh, peak, sh if 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 that's what I'm if if I'm right in terms of peak shave peak shaving being that when you have uh, extra demand, then being able to bring in the storage to take care of that load, it is possible because with storage and with solar and with wind, you're basically you can basically do everything you do with KPLC. That's what that's what I usually tell. Uh, my clients just to help them because someone will ask you, Neza figure pass in a solar, Neza, Neza, Neza chemsha margina solar, you know, you're basically just getting power the same way KPLC gives you electric energy. It's the same way you're getting that kind of uh, power. Even with the storage, you're storing it, yes, in the batteries, but what it will do, it will release, let's say it will release, yes, the DC current, but then if it's converted, you're able to get energy that is just the same you get from your KPLC grid. So what does this mean? Whichever kind of application you want to use with these storage systems and what it doesn't matter the source of power. So if it's solar, if it's wind, if it's nuclear, you know, it's as long as you're able to generate the needed power. So let's say I need a hundred kilowatt hour. So if I can put if I can put up a system that generates that much power, then it means I'm able to supply this system and actually get it to function just the same way to it function if I'm doing it on the grid. So to answer that question, yes, I, I, you are able to use storage and also to use the different renewable energy sources to supply even the peak shaving 
you can even go completely off grid. Like I've said, we've done systems which are completely off the grid and you're having people do everything with solar. So you can have storage and uh, renewable energy sources to power all your needs. It's to just make it simple. It's just the same as KPLC power. It's just that you need, it means you will dig deep into your pocket to set up that bigger load. But yes, it's possible to do everything with storage and uh, renewable energy sources. Peak shaving is used to compensate for the... Yes, you can, apart from doing the full, like doing everything fully on the solar or on the storage, then you can have, let's say, the essential loads or the extra loads you need to put on storage also, you can do that. So it's bas it's basically what what is your requirement? That's why that's why even when we engage clients, you usually have to go back and understand: Are you trying to save? How are you trying to save your bills? That means you want to reduce the items you use on the grid, or are you just trying to have a reliable source of power? So this is someone who will not mind uh, investing, but they will take up. Oh no! When it's someone who's just trying to get a, a stable source of power, then they can even use the grid with their storage that we call power backup. So when someone is basically just trying to make sure that their power doesn't go off when there is no grid or when they need extra power, then they can use the storage. They can actually even go ahead and charge those storage systems with the grid and then use it as need be. So I think that that answers the question. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, thank you, Chaltu. Uh, the next question uh, goes to, I think, uh, Isaac Owino. Uh, about the Expo conference, can students just attend to listen and learn? Uh, do we have to pay for the tickets? Isaac, if you're still here. Find the yes, thank that. you. Yeah. Thank you, Aisha. Uh, I tried negotiating with the organizer. And I told her that uh, for the students, I think we can just organize a special uh, place for them so that they can present even uh, towards the conclusion of the conference because they are not in a position to, to purchase the tickets. So it is still a work in progress. I'll just convince her on behalf of the students so that she just has the students to go to the conference with the presentations. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, is there anyone who has a question? One question, please. Yes, Jude. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chaltu, I have a question about the, about the presentation on supercapacitors. I understand that uh, in Kenya, we, 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 we normally employ the use of capacitor bank to mainly store charge during peak and of load then any electricity charge during sorry to store charge during off peak and uh, and uh, provide charge during peak hours now uh, does the use of that does uh, okay i'm amazing does these superconductors and does this capacitor bank employ the use of these superconductors and my second question is uh, do these superconductors have um, the capability to handle very huge charges in the ratings of MVS and above? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that question was from Jude. Or from? Yeah. Yes, Jude. Jude, okay. Thank you. Thank you for that question. So, to answer your question, I think uh, you guys might be confusing with normal capacitor banks. Yeah. So with these ones, they are super capacitors. Like, uh, okay, I've stopped sharing my screen, but when I started the presentation, I mentioned about now the super caps being able to store very high level of charge because unlike the normal capacitor banks, they, are, they have, okay, the electron systems are able to store higher, higher level of charge and then being able to, re to discharge this as per required. So initially, the biggest challenge supercapacitors is having is that now in terms of when it comes to discharging, get discharging very fast. You understand how capacity, like it was the same analogy as a capacitor, but now with the, what, okay, this, this, this uh, manufacturers of the supercaps will not go into details in, in terms of sharing what they've done to their electrical board to make it now 
not discharge as quickly. But I'll tell you for sure, you can be able to, they've integrated now uh, from the training we were having, they just mentioned it's hey, we've integrated uh, electro, elect, no, no, what is it? electron equipment on the board such that now the, the, the super caps don't, re don't release energy too quickly. So if you, it will, it will release energy as per requirement, just as the normal battery would be, which is why now it's made now the super caps be a competitor for lithium and other storages because it's able now to release the energy as per requirement. If you can go and research, you'll find even uh, Tesla, this guy for Tesla, I was trying to find his name before the meeting started. Someone please remind me the owner of Tesla. The name has just gone out of my head. Elon Musk. Elon Musk, yes, 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 Elon Musk. If you go and research, even Elon Musk, the Tesla company, they are trying to get into super cups because once this now has been has been able to be achieved, that you can be able to store store energy with the super cups and have them discharge as per requirements, then you're able to do whatever you want to do with the storage. Like you can have as big a storage as you want, yeah. And the fact that it's able to ch get charged and discharged without the battery getting destroyed, like, eh, I don't know how to tell you, but having been having seen these other technologies and then seeing something like this, it's 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 just phenomenal. Because I'll tell even me when I was getting into this company, I was like, I battery you can discharge Kabisa, and then you're able to store this much power. Like you know, it it looked it it seemed a bit off the radar. But when I when I sat down and actually looked at the systems, looked at the benefits you're getting, and seeing even these testimonials have been putting up, because that's the thing. When you bring something new to the market, getting people to actually uptake in a kwanga hard at the beginning. But if you're seeing systems that have, I'll I'll be honest, when I was getting in, I was like, Sasanians, I start selling a battery that I have to go start telling people all new about it. But I saw the size of systems that have been done, like they've done several systems, like the one I was telling you, the Lukana one, they've done systems in Masai Mara, they've done systems in Somali, they've done systems all over Kenya, even home systems now. At first, because the prices, I'll be honest, the prices are a bit higher because of the advantages and technologies. But you can be able, I can saying so many things, but you just know you can go after this. You can even reach out to me after this and, and I can share, I can share, uh, I can share the write-ups just to help you understand it a little better because I know two hours is smaller time to explain everything about it. But yeah, that's my email. So with the super caps, you're able, it's, it's, it's functioning just as this, the same as the other storages right now, but with added advantages that you're able to have the full depth of discharge. You can go to 100%. You can function at very high and very low temperatures. Uh, for those who want to see the system in action, I'd even welcome you to come to our offices and see them, uh, how they operate. Because you don't, the way you will get batteries heating up when they're charging, you don't even have anything like that. When you touch the battery, it's really, cool. it's, it's just normal temperature because it doesn't, the temperatures don't affect it. So the, since it's electrostatic, there's no, you know, with chemical reactions, you have a lot of heating happening. Yeah. So with this, since you don't have the, those electrochemical reactions happening, then you're able to the, see the, the, the process is very seamless. So yes, you can have higher level of uh, storage for your super cups. In simple words, the have I answered you? Was that Isaac? Yes, yes, technically. <laughs> so we can continue this discussion. Uh, okay, uh, I see. There's also another question on super capacitors. So mm -hmm. someone is asking, just wondering, does this uh, benefit of supercapacitors mean the end of life of lead acid and lithium ion batteries? And also, what's the use case of supercapacitors compared to the current uh, lead acid and uh, lithium ion batteries? Sorry, I haven't gotten the second part. The use case of the supercapacitors compared to the current ones. The what case? Use case of supercapacitors 
compared to the current uh, lead acid batteries. First case. Use case. Okay, let me use case. Yes. And maybe you'll explain that. So the first part was. Oh, if it means the end of the, I, I tell you yeah, for sure it yeah. means the end of the lead acid because a eh, lead acid, you you have, let, let's say, let's say for the depth of distance, you only have 60%, yeah? For, what is this called? The chemical reactions is, the, you, 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 the shelf life of the batteries. So let's say, for example, for lead acid, you can have your battery lying around and then you've not even used it. It's a new battery, but it's been in storage for so long. There's maintenances you have to do, the, the, the what are these called? The terminals have to keep being cleaned. And then even for lead acid, at least for the gel batteries, it's usually a little better. But with the lead, lead acid, I'll tell you for sure, you can even have your batteries. The shelf life cannot go beyond two years. And even with those, let's say a battery. So even when clients were trying to buy batteries, they'd ask you, your battery may come for how long? Has it stayed more than six, six months, even if it's not been used? Then it, it, because of that, it makes it uh, <laughs> just a stressful mini uh, storage system. And then you're looking at within two, within if, you, if your battery goes for a good number of life, then it's going to go for, let's say five years, yeah? That means you've charged your, your battery well. The graph I showed you, the life cycle against the mini, against depth of discharge. You can go and look. If you can get the data sheet for these storages, just go and compare that. It will tell you everything. So you go for lead acid, you'll find it's usually now that 3,500 or 3,000 life cycles. And with this, it's only if you, if you discharge your battery like 20%. And you can't do that. Like the 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 well, if you if you have your battery discharged at twenty percent, then it means you will need a very big uh, so many of them. At the end of the day, you end up spending even just the same as you would have done with lithium or supercaps. So for lead acid, I'll say for sure it we it is going to especially if we continue creating awareness among the users on these benefits and advantages, then lead is definitely going to be taken out of the market. Because it's cheap right now, but if you consider it, the number of times you'll have to buy batteries over and over again and over again, then it's not a viable system. And you're looking at the risks, even if it's short circuiting, if it's, if anything happens, you can easily get fires. If, yeah. And then for the for lithium, I'll say no. Lithium is here to stay with us for at least a good number of years to come. It's a it's a technology that's still going to stay with us. Because with lithium, at least you get 10 years of uh, life of uh, life of the batteries. It's a system that has been used uh, for quite some time, even compared to the supercaps. So with that, it's a technology that has proven itself and it's still going to continue to be used. But I'll tell you, supercaps is the future. It is here and it is going to be the, it's, it's going to overtake even, even more. Let's say it, it's going to be an even bigger and bigger competitor yeah because right now you're having clients who are you you are looking at uh, the advantages and even in terms of pricing for both with supercuts the biggest challenge you are having is pricing it was super super expensive but rates you know the more the product is accepted into the market and the more it's being used then the even the prices go a bit lower so with that it's getting to penetrate the market even more and more but these two technologies are going to, are, are now the ones which we are going to have going on for the foreseeable future. That's my answer. Uh, uh, okay, uh, thank you, Chalto. Uh, we have one last question. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have one last question from Annette. It says, uh, having worked with storage solutions for renewable energy, you have mentioned that mm -hmm. technology is available. As it is, what are the prices for a normal Kenyan looking to install? And what is your take on areas we need to look to innovate to aid renewable energy and make it cheaper to average Kenyans? Yeah, so price has always been a, a challenge for most Kenyans. If you want to do the whole system, so someone is looking at, let's say, I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're doing your, 
or what is this called? Your fridge, lighting, TV to be on storage, like and to be on storage comfortably, then you need to have at least 300k. With super cups, it is it's even more expensive if you're doing with the with the with super cups and lithium. Although now the pricing, I'll tell you for sure. I've had like the other day I had a client. Let me because now we are talking about prices. Let me just give you a case and scenario so that you can see how the two really, really compare. Because you if you're talking about just the storage itself, when it comes to posting, storage is the most expensive thing in any solar system you're going to do. Whether it's the lead acid or the lithium or the supercars, storage is usually the expensive thing, which is why you need to invest wisely on the storage system that you're taking for your solar. Because right now solar panels are going for as cheap as 30 shillings per watt. But when it comes to storage, you have batteries, even the lead acid ones are going for like 30k, the 200 AH. If you're talking about gel batteries, then it's going for things like 45. Those for now the good gel batteries. Then when you come now to the lithium ion, you're having ranges of 200,000, but that's a three point, like around 3.5 kilowatt hour, which is the same as four batteries of the 200 AH, just to help you understand. And when you're talking about two, four batteries of the 200 AH, that means you would have around 200,000 with the lead acid. So you see, if you if you are having a difference of let's say 50,000 or 100,000, and you're looking at with the lead acid, you will have to, to redo your system, let's say in the next two or three years. With this other one, you're getting 10 plus years lifespan. You put up your system, you're done with the issue of renewing the battery. So the other thing now most of the, most of the solar industry is doing is that now integrating financing options because yes you're telling someone this is a better option you're going it's going it's a better technology but that doesn't make money pop in my pocket out of nowhere you know so the other thing that uh, the market has now one of the changes in the market is that financing options are now available banks have really come up now for the home systems you find banks coming up with uh, uh, funds whereby now clients can be able to take the system and then the lipa pole pole, the mcopa. So not mcopa, what is it called? Now that's paying slowly for your system. The other option is you can find even companies now giving you an option where you do something we call lease to own. So the system becomes its own guarantee. So if I've taken a system, let's say a five kilowatt system, if I'm if I so with the list to own, I pay a certain percentage, let's say like 30, 40 percent of what I'm, of what the total cost of the system is. And then over a number of months, I make payment per month to payment per month based on the remaining amount. So the system will be its own guarantee such that if I don't pay this amount, then Najua, this system will be will come and be taken off. And you'll find if you that if it's a client we do financial analysis, Bizuri, then this person will probably not will. It's very rare cases you'll find someone now has been given the system and then doesn't pay the required installment because you do you do need this power. So that kind of setup has helped a lot of the home systems, common monarchy, as you've said, common Kenyan, be able now to take up the solution because in a that uh, that floor to be able to pay for this system slowly. The other option now with the in, in industrial and commercial systems, we call them CNI. So with CNI, you have financiers who have actually come in and then a client can be able to get the system, get everything done for him, not pay a single cent upfront and then pay KPLC bills, like not KPLC bills, pay tariff just as the same they would pay for KPLC, but at a lower cost. So I hope that's clear that there are systems you can have for smaller systems, you can have the list to own where someone pays a small percentage and then pays for the rest in let's say like six months installments. For C and I, because these systems are usually bigger, then you have the you pay a tariff, but a cheaper tariff compared to KPLC. And with this, the clients don't have to pay that upfront cost. So it makes the it makes the uptake easier because most of most people do want to go solar, do want to go uh, renewable, but the cost is usually the challenge. So with this, the market, the common monarchy finds it now, finds a better space now to take up the systems. I hope that answers that question. Uh, 
Aisha. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chalto. I have to add take over from Aisha. We have to excuse her for okay. a while. Ramadan hours yes, have arrived. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Happy Ramadan, Aisha. <laughs> yeah, let's excuse her. Okay, we are coming even to the close of the, the presentation. I want to thank yes. you so much. I thank you so much. Yes, I hope all the questions have been asked. Yes, question uh, yeah, yes, can please. I have a follow-up session? I'm sorry, I also okay. have to say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, yeah, curfew time and I've really kept someone. So we can have follow-up sessions even after first day. At the beginning of this, Aisha really explained well about first day. And I hope all the one, all the people here are part of IEEE. I'll tell you, Mimi, my career growth, and I can really account it to IEEE. And you'll see sessions like this. You guys are in campus. I'm very sure in school, no one will tell you these things, yeah? So IEEE gives you that platform to, to find details to network to just find a society where you're able to if you're if you're if you're be smart i'll tell you that for sure don't wait to finish school and then start getting smart start being smart right now find the right platforms where you can find information that will i remember shadrach asking me the other day about how to register to become an engineer and it's like why were you treat all these things when we are in school you know so use ieee to the best of your like to your to your advantage register for this i mean join these different uh webinars that have held i myself am still learning from different webinars that are still held so make sure you 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 take advantage of it use it to the best network with your fellow students get onto platforms that are not for students only you know it just helps you to grow and it helps your leadership me i'll tell you for sure my career growth i can ask i can contribute a lot, a very huge percentage of it to having been in IEEE. It enhances your skill when it comes to leadership, when it comes to organizing yourself and organizing even yourself at work, it really comes a long way. So with that, I'd like to encourage all of you to get onto this event and I'm very happy and available to hold a, a priority, not priority site as before. I'm sorry, it's because I'm a bit distracted. We can have more of these events. Just feel, just reach out to me. I also saw Chela was here. She's also really good with renewable energy. She's been doing projects in Masai Mara. So we are all, and she's also going to have a talk. I don't know if it's still about uh, renewables, but feel free to reach out to us. We are happy to share knowledge and to empower all of you. So thank you so much. I'm sorry you'll have to excuse me. I hope that's okay. Okay, Charles, we can, we can go ahead uh, presenting somewhere. Oh, we thank you so much for the presentation. We hope to meet you thank soon. You. I've seen Kitinji. Please make sure Kitinji says hi before you leave this meeting. Who? He's the chair for YP. Okay, sure, sure enough. But in the meantime, Kitinji also... Murungi. Hey, Kikuyu, Muriungu. Muriungu. Kitinji, sorry. <laughs> He can, yeah, I can see him, Kitinji Muriung. He can say hi, then afterwards, uh, he'll be followed by our chairman for first, Felix Shadrach, who will give his closing remarks as we all uh, prepare for, to end this meeting. So, Kitinji, welcome. Uh, hello, I hope you can hear me. Yes, you can hear me. Please proceed. Yeah, perfect. Uh, my, 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 mine today was just to listen to Chalto. I think uh, she's uh, very, she has shared very insightful uh, information. I'm glad, I'm just traveling, but I had to, to tune in, although late, but I couldn't miss, I couldn't afford to miss her presentation. Uh, mine is just at least to echo her words. Guys, uh, there's, there's, there's more life out here, and uh, we really need at least dedicated guys come out of school with uh, most of these uh, knowledge, ask for questions, ask for also mentors, uh, seek for guidance, and at least when uh, when you'll be meeting us here as YPs, at least we have a, a very big uh, community where we we can all help one another. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to spoil Chalto's session, but she has really done a very awesome job. Chalto, thank you very much, and uh, keep guiding uh, 
these guys. Uh, bye bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sadrak, you can have the like closing remarks. But please, because of time. Since Shadrach is not ready to join us, maybe he has, he has experienced some technical knowledge. And because of his inability, I'd like to thank all of you guys for joining us. This is the first of many. Hey, uh, can you hear me now? Okay, there he is. Shadrach, we can hear you. Continue. Oh, yeah. I have already given a speech, but uh, the technical hitches are shut me out, so I'll just repeat it. Uh, 25 participants now, I can see, and there were 31 earlier. That is a great turn up for this event, as you may have heard uh, or seen on your screen. I am Felix Shadrach, and I am the chair of IEEE PES, and uh, I'd, I'd like to to thank the gentleman who really gave, actually it is the ladies who gave the introduction to this meeting, which was a good introduction. And I think uh, Stacy Awinja and Aisha and uh, Charles too, that, that was a great job. I, I can't fail to recognize your, your efforts the, the effort that you bring to the table, uh, it, it is it is good to see ladies uh, coming strong and uh, really taking up uh, positions that I'm seeing men, I think men are shying off because men are represented. Uh, the, their number is slightly, okay. Yeah, there are many men, but uh, managerial positions, uh, I don't see them. Uh, really it is the ladies who take the managerial positions and it is child who has spoken a lot and brought a lot of uh, content to this meeting so uh, kudos to them for the men i will not forget you that is jude nyoike we have alan Koech and mr isaac uh, I, uh, I have really learned a lot today and i hope the 31 participants have also learned something so yeah, mine is just um, uh, a, a vote of thanks for the effort that you people are bringing to the table. And uh, I, hopefully next time we will have more members. Uh, spread the word out there. What we are doing here is really important. And uh, one thing I'd, I'd like to say is, uh, as far as we are presenting projects here, you you go home and do your own work. and. Uh, bring something tangible to the table those capacitors we need to see them we need the, we need something that is working something that we can we can sell yeah that is what i'm looking for something that we can we can generate income from yeah uh, so it shouldn't be just presentations i hope uh, everyone is working on a side gig because uh, so far all I've seen is from Chaldu, which is great. And I hope Chaldu will be doing the, is, is not only doing the PowerPoint, is doing the project physically. And the rest of you, I hope you also have your side projects that you may present later. And yeah, that, that, that will be all from me right now. And I guess, uh, I, thank you, thank you all for participating. Dude, you can you can you can conclude you can take over 
Thank you, thank you Shabbat, for the closing remarks. Now I guess our meeting is over. Everybody can leave at their own pleasure. Thank you so much. We hope to see you soon in the next meeting. Thank you. All right. So everyone should leave one by one. 22. Uh, goodbye. I guess.